G'day, it's Robbie again. Well, uh, about four years ago when I got this old Shawblin lathe going, uh, this old 102 Shawblin from the 1930s that I bought as a wreck and did up. Uh, I did a video showing how I made up the oil cups for it because it didn't have oil cups. Somebody actually <laughs> fitted it with grease nipples and was greasing the spindle. Horror of horrors. So I made up some oil cups because original 102 oil cups from the 1930s are scarce as the proverbial hen's teeth and even if you could get them they'd cost an arm and a leg. And uh, these are the cups I made up and they're a very simple thing, they're just a, a brass tube with a brass bottom uh, soldered in with a centre core uh, made of steel which is threaded, which threads through the bottom and then threads into the headstock. Very simple. So if you go back and look at my videos, uh, you'll see a description of how, how, how it goes together. Now the thing is, it's interesting because when I did the video uh, four years ago, I was obviously a newbie on making oilers and I did what a lot of people do with oilers and I used a, a fibre, a cord type wick to go basically up from the bottom up through the centre, roll over the top and go down and into the actual reservoir itself and the oil then capillary rates from the pot up through the, through the cord and, and down through the centre. Now, that's, that's okay, it works, it works, but there's some issues. And I was recently watching a video by uh, uh, a guy I subscribed to, uh, Rolling Metal, good channel, um, good comments on that channel as well. And he put up a video showing how he'd made similar pot, uh, vary the design a bit so that he could actually um, stop the oil flow by basically um, blocking the vent hole, uh, but he was having trouble with the oil flow. There was too much oil still going down through the tube, you know, the cord was sucking it up and it was, you know, it just wasn't regulating. And that's the whole issue with cord type wicks, regulating the oil is, is difficult. But there is a way around it. Um, I got back to him and said, well look, you should do this, this and this, and I'm, uh, I'm still waiting to see the next video to see how it works out. But I'll show you basically how you can actually avoid this over-oiling issue with cord type wicks with these basic pot type oilers. Okay, well here's a diagram I got off the internet that I printed off showing a basic pot type oiler. Here's your pot. Here's your little lid that just sits on there. Here's your wick coming from the oil reservoir in the bottom of the pot up and over and down through the centre. So this would actually go all the way down out the bottom close to the spindle. Okay, there'd be your spindle. The top part of the spindle. That's your wick all the way. Now the problem you've got of course is that the oil is just going to go up and over and come through and you've got very little chance of controlling it because uh, you can vary the, the wick size but they tend to be all around the similar dimensions the wicks that you get for a given size pot. So you know how do you control the oil flow? Well, when I made my oil pots up originally, I used a wick too. And uh, I just used some Holland blind cord, you know, which is that tiny cord that they use on Venetian blinds and things like that. And then I discovered the error of my ways and I did some research on Shawblins and I found that Shawblins actually don't use a fibre or cloth type wick. Shawblin actually use a wire wick. They use a piece of wire in a J shape so that if we 
get rid of that and we look at some genuine a genuine Shawlan oiler from the 1930s which I picked up with a another lathe we'll see the you can see the, the design of this thing top just comes off inside is your oil pot I hope that's showing up and when I got them these had cord wicks in them which is wrong for Shawblin anyway and as I said you can't regulate you'll find it very difficult to regulate your oil flow like that so I'll come in close and I'll show you what you should be using okay so what was in these little oil pots when I got them were cord wicks like most people tend to use and that would have just fitted into the pot and the centre bit would have gone down the guts of it and the oil would have capillarated through the cord and down the centre onto the spindle. But Shulban never used cord wicks and for good reason because as I said you've got very little chance of controlling the oil flow with that arrangement because the wick is going to fill the, that centre core because of the size of the things you're, you're dealing with. So Shulman did away with this idea and they use this idea and it's a bit of J-shaped steel wire and you can see that it's basically the same as a cloth wick except it's wire and you go oh well you know how can that possibly work the oil can't go up through wire well oil actually doesn't go up through fibre either in the true sense it capillarates between the fibres but it's using surface tension and it's actually going up the individual fibres the same as ha happens with a piece of wire you imagine if you had four or five strands of wire all twisted together they're going to act just like that but of course the beauty of using a piece of wire is that by varying the diameter of the wire you vary the surface of the circumference area and you vary the, the oil flow so the oil uh, uses surface tension to get from the pot up and over and come down and it works like an external siphon in effect and these work beautifully absolutely beautifully so you would just put the wire in like so and it just comes down and sits on the bottom of the pot goes up and over and down and out the bottom simple 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 so there you go something to think about if you've got these type of pots and you're over oiling your lathe or under oiling it or whatever use a wire wick instead of a cloth wick and you'll have complete control of the oil flow now the oil will drip at the same rate of drops basically or very close to the same whether you use thick wire or thin wire because it will capillarate up and over and siphon down at the same rate but the difference is that instead of getting a big blob of oil on a big piece of wire you're getting a small blob of oil on a small piece of wire so the, the circumference is the determining factor on how much oil comes up out of the pot and goes down when you have wire wicks and you fill the pot you always wet the wire to make sure that the siphon action works but once the oil is wet from the beginning it basically works okay anyway I've never had any issues with the pots never never oiling correctly even when I've just squirted it in around but normally yeah, if you use this idea you would squirt on the centre fill the pot and that would get the thing going that's it simple 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 so you know I hadn't thought about uh, a follow-up to that video because I <laughs> I just went on my merry way and made up these uh, wire wicks and everything was wonderful but when I saw Rolling Metals post and saw he was struggling I thought I'd better go back and look at that video and see whether I've actually mentioned that I've switched across to wire wicks and I, I hadn't actually mentioned it so here you go it's a follow-up to a four-year-old video um, I hope it gives you some ideas and helps you out and yeah.
That's it for me. I'll see you next time. Cheers.